Once you have your data in Google Sheets, you have a lot of options for how you format the data. Now, this is mostly cosmetic in terms of changing the appearance of the data, but it's also something that can help you organize the data that makes it much easier to follow the argument and bring things to your attention. Let me give you some of the really obvious things if you've ever used a computer before, this is going to be familiar. So, first off, is you get to change the font. The default font in Google Sheets is Arial, which is very clean and it works well in a lot of situations. On the other hand, maybe you want a different font. Maybe you want something like Sorts Mill Gaudi. That's one that I like. And you come up here and you click on fonts and you go to Sorts Mill Gaudi. Now, you may not have that because it's not installed by default. If it's not, you just go to More Fonts. That takes you to a web page and you can add a huge number of fonts. Don't add all of them because then it gets confusing, but find something that you need, works for your purposes, and you can add it in here and it becomes available and it becomes available to anybody who uses your document. Another option is something like Consolus. If you're using code, a fixed width font is pretty common. You can change the font size. So you can make it smaller. It's 10 point by default, 8 point is, well, I've got my screen zoomed in super big, so it's not too hard to see. You can make it a lot bigger, and obviously this is something you might want to do if you are uh, putting in headings or titles. Now, one thing to be aware of is you're not limited to the choices that are here. So for instance, I put 20 point, but I only had 24 point. Just come up here, select the number, and type what you want. There's a 20 point font. You can also do the bold. All you got to do is do Command or Control B, or you can click on that. Same thing with italics. I'll just come up here. You can do the other command and and strike through. I don't use strike through very often, but it might be important for your purposes. Okay, those are all quick and easy. The next one is text color. Obviously, if you've used a computer before, you know how to do this stuff. But Color can be an important indicator of both importance and directing focus. And that can be really important when you're putting together visualizations or making a table that you're going to have to come back to and you need help interpreting it or you're sharing it with other people. So I can come down and select the color. There's red text. You can also do fill color. That's an option. So if I do the fill, it puts in the cell. Now, by the way, when you have a dark fill like this, you usually want to come and pick white text to go on top of it so it's easier to tell what's going on. You can do cell borders, and I do these only lightly. I try to keep it pretty clean. To do cell borders, select the cells that you want to have borders on, and then come up to the borders. And, you know, you can put cells borders on everything, but that's kind of a nightmare. You don't want to do that. There are times I have find, however, that it's nice to have just horizontal lines going through the data. It's relatively easy to direct the line across the rows in a table, especially when it's printed. But I'm going to take that out for right now. You have, but cell borders are an option. Row height, you can snap it to fit or you can have a consistent size. Now, snap to fit means something that happened automatically here. You saw how that got bigger. I can drag it down so it's super huge, or I can bring it back up. Either way, you saw when I changed the font size, it automatically changed the height of the row so that the text would fit. Similar to that, you have options for column width. You can snap to fit or do a consistent size. This actually requires a small demonstration. So I'm going to put three column headings here. And I'm going to make them bold because I often find it's helpful to have column headings in bold. And they're different sizes. If you want to snap to fit, you can just select these three columns and then double click here on the right one. And then it changes the width of each column so that the, it adjusts to the size of the text. And there may be situations in which you want to do that. On the other hand, I find that having different size columns, it can be a little disturbing. So you can also do a consistent size. So for instance, I can select all three of them here and I can make all of them the size of this last one. If I just click this, I drag it around a little and I let go, now all of them will be the same size. And that usually 
is easier to read because you have this uniform movement across the document. In addition to that, and maybe this is a solution, you can do text alignment. Now, all the text that I've got right here so far is flush left. You can, of course, come over here and you can center it. You can also make it flush right. But text is usually flush left and that works best. On the other hand, if you're doing a column, you may want to have centered text for columns, especially with the columns are different sizes, that makes things a little easier. You also have the option of changing vertical alignment. But to make that clear, let me show you one other thing. And that is text wrapping where it says overflow wrap and clip. So let's make this a little more obvious by making all of these smaller, narrower. Okay, so you see how this one that says extra, extra, extra long is now too big. One of the options I have is to come right here and to change it so that it is wrapped. And that has it, you know, go to two lines. It is not breaking very well. If I put in a space here, it should break better because it treats it as a single word. There we go. Now it's breaking better. On the other hand, Maybe you want these other ones on the bottom, but maybe you want to vertically orient them towards the top, towards the middle, and you know, whatever works best for your purposes. These are a lot of different ways that you can format the document. Again, the point here is not to noodle away your time and just kind of mess with it because you can. But the point of it is to organize the document to make it clearer, you want clarity, and you want direction, you want to guide the eye through your document to make the comprehension and analysis easier and formatting even with this small range of options is going to make that a lot easier to do in Google Sheets.